Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're having a good one. I'm Nick and today I'm getting into my first ranking of a director. And I figured why not start off with James Wong since I already reviewed all the Final Destination films and he's done two of those and he only got two other movies under his belt. So James Wong is known for writing uh, episodes of X-Files and different shows like American Horror Story. But he has directed four films. So we're going to sit here and rank them right now. So the four films that he directed includes Final Destination, The One, Final Destination 3, and Dragon Ball Evolution. So I'm going to be ranking these four films from worst to best. So let's go. So coming in last place at fourth, we got Dragon Ball Evolution. This is no surprise here. This movie is a piece of shit. This was the last movie that James Wong directed and... No one probably trusts them to direct anything anymore after this. Honestly, they just completely butcher everything that made Dragon Ball Dragon Ball. Like, the manga is such a love series and beloved animated series that I would be scared to, to kind of touch it as well and try to make it into live action. It has to be really in the right person's hands and... That was not the case in this scenario. Everything's done wrong in this film. Every single character is butchered to the hills. Goku played by Justin Chadwin terrible terrible choice and it's not just that like all the characters are terrible but they're all written terrible too none of them feel like the characters we knew before in the animated series they're all changed they all got different personalities different uh this different goals everything's changed uh Goku for example he's just like a a horny teen trying to get Chi Chi at his high school the whole time it's like since when is this even set on earth uh, in the original animated series, this was like on another planet with dinosaurs and stuff. And it was like futuristic technology in that. And they try to add that in here with the futuristic technology a little bit with their lock lockers being digital and stuff. But it's like, come on, guys. This, this is so bad. And our villain in this one is Piccolo. And he just looks stupid. And his motivation is literally, I want to take over the world. That's it. No backstory. No nothing. It's just dumb and lazy the fighting sucks none of it looks good at all the kamehameha was butchered it's like this air bending thing now nothing like the show i feel like the the writers and james wong none of them have even watched one episode of dragon ball in their life so honestly feels like a, a cheap fan film and this cost it 30 million dollars to make and there's even rumors saying it was as high as a hundred million, really. So that is just so sad for for what we ended up getting. The set pieces look like garbage. The special effects is garbage. Cringeworthy acting. This is just a complete waste of time. If you're unfamiliar with the show Dragon Ball, this is just going to be a very forgettable, generic, throwaway movie. But if you are familiar with the TV series. This is just a disgrace and a piece of shit and I will never watch it again after after this ranking that is it. So coming in at number 3 we got the movie The One starring Jet Li and Jet Li. Uh, this movie is pretty crazy it's like an action kung fu some sci-fi film. Uh, very odd blend but it really works and that's my favorite thing about this movie is the concept is a uh, there's a multiverse out there. There's like a hundred and some versions of yourself in these different universes. And there's this one, the bad version of Jet Li figures out that if you kill off the other versions of yourself, the rest of their power and energy gets distributed to the rest of them. Until there's just the bad guy Eula left and Gabe, our main uh, character, both played by Jet Li. It's just a really great high concept idea that uh, you can really make a whole uh, franchise out of it on top of that we got some pretty good action uh, a lot of it's like uh, reminiscent of the matrix at times and since this came out like right after like one of those hybrid action kung fu movies but with a lot of sci-fi mixed on top uh, i think the characters are all done fairly well aside from our main lead gabe i feel like jet Li has a hard time dealing with the star status like he's a great martial artist and he can do all the stunts and all that stuff but he's missing a certain personality like that Jackie Chan and Bruce Lee brought to the table where he's not bad as the lead is this I feel like he could be better but as the bad guy as Eula I think he does a great job as playing the villain 
And the side characters all do a fairly good job too. We actually get Jason Statham in this one. I always forget he's in this film. When I wanted to rewatch it, I'm like, oh yeah, he's in here. And he's like one of the agents trying to catch uh, Eula, the bad Jet Li. And he definitely adds to this film. This movie is just really high energy, really fast paced. Uh, you're not sitting there bored or looking at your time. It's only an hour and a half and it just flies by. The pacing is phenomenal. And the soundtrack, since this is a 2001 film, <laughs> I'm kind of mixed on the soundtrack because it feels very 2001. Yeah, like uh, Disturbed, like all those like new metal bands all playing in this film. And you get a kind of a funny scene with Eula, the bad guy, listening to it. He's like, at least something good in this universe. <laughs> it kind of made me laugh, but it was a little cringeworthy at the same time. So all in all, I really loved the idea of this film and the concept. It could have been executed a little better. Uh, the directing side of things isn't the best. I think the fight scenes could have been done better, especially since we have Jet Li and we know what he's capable of. Even though he does give us a, quite a bit of good fight scenes in this film, I think the action could have been shot better and just filmed better. Uh, and a few plot holes in the story. But aside from that, overall, this is a really fun ride and it's super watchable. So coming in the second place, I got Final Destination 3. Now, I just reviewed all of these films uh, on my channel. You can go check them out. I even did a uh, Final Destination ranking. So, uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. But, I always enjoyed Part 3. That's the roller coaster one. Uh, the Premonition is not the best. Uh, the graphics and the, the green screen and that can get into the way of your experience a little bit. But, it's still not bad. Uh, I love how they kill off my least favorite characters right away. And we're stuck with the ones I actually like to spend time with. Uh, our main lead, Mary Elizabeth Winstead, is great in this. I love her in everything. Uh, the kills are pretty good in this too. Uh, it's too bad they added a little CGI because they were all done practically. And they, they actually ruined it a little bit. But overall, they're pretty good. And this is just another fun little ride to go on. I do like that they added in the camera and the pictures to give you clues on how they're going to die. I thought that was a genius way to add to the story without changing it too much. Yeah, and like I said, this, this is a fun movie with some pretty good kills. I do love the ending too with that uh, subway premonition. I say it's even better than the roller coaster. But coming in the first place is James Wong's directorial debut, Final Destination from 2000. Uh, funny enough, he was a writer on X-Files and this was supposed to be an X-Files episode, but they decided to turn it into a film and I'm so glad they did. We got a whole franchise out of it. And this is not just my favorite movie of James Wong. This is also my favorite Final Destination movie, period. Uh, I love the airplane premonition. It's Everybody always talks about the log uh, premonition, log truck on the highway on part two, which is great. But I feel like this one doesn't get enough love. The original. Flight 180. Scary as shit. So many people don't want to get on airplanes ever since that film. Uh, I love the cast in this. Uh, Devin Sawa. You always gotta love him. It was around the time he was doing like Idle Hands and all that stuff. So he was in his prime in the horror genre at this time. The rest of the cast is great too. Ali Larder, Sean William Scott, they all do a great job. Uh, the kills aren't as maybe as inventive or as gory or anything as the sequels, but I think they're all done really well and there's no real bad ones. You get a few surprises like the bus one and the sign at the end. And since this is the first film in the franchise, you got more of a mysterious vibe to it and, uh, you know, trying to figure out what's going on, if they could survive. Because once you're on like the third and fourth movie, you're going to start being like, okay, we know exactly how this is going to play out. But this has the advantage of being the first film. And I think this is the film where he put his uh, directorial skills to the test. This is all the little clues about Flight 180, whether it be like in his room with the airplane models and stuff. To like everything you see throughout the whole movie is like clues to how death's going to take you out or whatever. And it's just, I love it. It's genius. And just, just the whole concept of how you can't cheat death or it will come back to pick you off one by one is it's almost like a supernatural slasher type film and I love that. Well there you have it guys. I just ranked all four James Wong films that he directed. Uh, let me know down below how you would rank these four films. Make sure to like and subscribe if you like these type of rankings and reviews and uh, drop down below another director you would like me to uh, go through their filmography. I just happened to do James Wong because I already did two of the Final Destination films, so I figured I'd get the other two films out of the way as well.
Anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. I'll catch you next time, and thanks for watching.